she longed for a life of luxury and romance based on the many pulp novels she read. Sadly, Emma's initial enthusiasm for Charles waned rather quickly. She returned a different woman. She finally had a lover like all the heroines in her romantic novels. Gustave Flaubert was a French novelist. Highly influential. He has been considered the leading exponent of literary realism in his country. According to the literary theorist Cornelige Cavas, in Flaubert, realism strives for formal perfection. So the presentation of reality tends to be neutral, emphasizing the values and importance of style as an objective method of presenting reality. He is known especially for his debut novel Madame Bovary, his correspondence, and his scrupulous devotion to his style and aesthetics. Now, let's get started. Charles Bovary was a country doctor. He met Emma Rouault when he was called to a local farm to set her father's leg. Charles was immediately taken with Emma, who was pretty and charming. Though she was intelligent and well-educated due to her schooling at a convent, she longed for a life of luxury and romance based on the many pulp novels she read. His wife died suddenly. After an appropriate mourning period, Charles started courting Emma and succeeded in getting her father's consent to marriage. Charles and Emma married. The wedding feast lasted for three days, bringing together people from the town and the village. Unfortunately, Emma's relationship with her mother-in-law wasn't off to a good start. The elder Madame Bovary was upset because she hadn't gotten any say in the wedding preparations. Charles felt like a new person after his wedding night. He was certain that a new and better life was beginning for him, and he savored the domestic moments with his new wife. Spending a lot of time just watching her. Sadly, Emma's initial enthusiasm for Charles waned rather quickly as she found that life with him didn't correspond to her romantic childhood dreams of happiness and passion. She quickly realized that Charles was well-meaning but dull, and was dissatisfied with her marriage. Emma was bored with her monotonous life. She wanted travel, explore foreign places and instill some romance into her marriage. But she failed miserably as her attempts clash with Charles's down-to-earth and unrefined nature. An invitation from the Marquis d'Addervilliers to a ball at his mansion Le Vaubiessard finally brought the much-craved for excitement. Emma was in her element. She loved everything about the ball, from the lights and the dancing to the people and the food. She spent the evening dancing with various partners and pretty much forgot that she had come with Charles. Charles, on the other hand, was only too glad finally to return to Toasties. She was terribly bored, longed to return to the world of the ball, and devoured novels and women's magazines. Her feelings for her husband, who, lulled by the apparent peacefulness of his domestic life fell asleep in his armchair in the evenings, had turned into mild disdain. She despised him for his mediocrity and lack of vision and ambition. Emma fell ill. A deep melancholy and despair stoke her down. Charles suspected that there's a physical reason for it, but she refused any medication. He thought that maybe a change of location might help, so he found a new position in the small village of Yonville Labbe and started organizing the move. When they left, Emma was pregnant. When Emma and Charles arrived in Yonville Labbe, they stoped at an inn. There, Charles got into a conversation with the local pharmacist, Monsieur Homais. While Emma started talking to the young Leon Dupuis, who worked as a clerk in the village. They got on extremely well, and their conversation flew easily from topic to topic. Both were fascinated with and drawn to all things new, and it almost seemed like they had found soulmates in each other. However, Yonville Labbe overall proved to be as boring and narrow-minded as Toasties. Charles wasn't too happy with his new home either. As there were few patients and money was becoming a problem. The only excitement for them was the birth of their first child. However, when Bert was born, Emma soon grew tired of her and gave her over to a nursemaid in the village. 
One evening, when she went to visit her daughter, she bumped into Leon, who walked part of the way with her and set the rumor mills in the village turning. Leon felt more and more drawn to Emma, who to him seemed to be so different from all the other people in the village. He didn't dare to confess his feelings to her, though. Emma, too, began to wonder if she might be in love with him. Emma and Leon spent more and more time together, whether at the Sunday gatherings at Homus's house or during walks with a group of people, but they never managed to have time on their own. Like Leon, Emma didn't have the courage to show him how she felt, despite her suspicion that he was in love with her. Leon, on the other hand, couldn't imagine that Emma would have reciprocate his feelings. She appeared to him as the epitome of the good wife and mother. One day, Emma received a visit from the cunning shopkeeper Laruo, who showed her his goods and assured her that he could get whatever luxury item she desired, he would also sell them to her on credit. While Emma didn't buy anything from him on this occasion, his offer would come back to haunt her. Heartbroken by Emma's apparent indifference, Leon decided to leave the village to finish his studies in Paris. He said goodbye to Emma, hoping that she might have given him a sign that would have convinced him to stay. But nothing happened, and he left. After Leon's departure, Emma fell back into melancholy and depression. She tried to console herself by buying new clothes and knickknacks, baubles, changing her hairstyle, learning Italian, and studying philosophy, but nothing really seemed to help. Then one day, a Monsieur Rodolphe Boulanger from La Huchette appeared at their house to ask Charles to bleed one of his farmers, who suffered from tingling sensations. When the poor man fainted at the sight of his own blood, Charles called Emma to come and help. When Rodolphe saw Emma, he was struck by her looks. The experienced womanizer decided to seduce her. He gathered that her life with her boring husband must have been devoid of passion and excitement, and he started to execute his plan carefully. Love, she thought, must come suddenly, with great outbursts and lightnings, a hurricane of the skies, which falls upon life, revolutionizes it roots up the will like a leaf, and sweeps the whole heart into the abyss. At an agricultural fair, Rodolphe sought out her company and then led her into a room in the town hall, from which they watched the ceremony. He hinted at his feelings and tried to take her hand but didn't push her. After the encounter, he stayed away for weeks. As expected, his absence kindled Emma's passion. When he finally arrived again at her house, he played the desperate, unrequited lover, claiming that he had stayed away because he couldn't have borne the turmoil of feelings that her sight was causing. He told her that he believed fate had brought them together. Emma still resisted Rodolphe's advances but was secretly desperate to have some time along alone with him. The opportunity came when the naive Charles gave his consent to Emma going horseback riding with Rodolphe. Charles believed that it would be good for her health in. When she hesitated, even encouraged her to take Rodolph up on the offer. On a foggy October day, they rode out together, and Emma succumbed to Rodolph's charms. She returned a different woman, she finally had a lover like all the heroines in her romantic novels. Over the next days and months, Rodolph and Emma met regularly, and Emma, recklessly, even started visiting Rodolphe in his house early in the mornings. Emma became obsessed with Rodolphe. To please and excite him, she dressed in the latest fashion and jewelry from Larue. She pushed Rodolphe to run away with her. But while her feelings for him grew stronger and stronger, he started seeing her as just one more concubine in a long line of lovers. He enjoyed the power he had over her and constantly humiliated her. However, in a moment of weakness, he agreed to her plan to run away together and to take Bert with them. Emma started planning and bought several items from Laruo for the journey, such as a travel case and a cloak. At their last meeting before their agreed departure, Rodolphe promised Emma that he would be at the coach, but in reality, he already knew that he wouldn't go through with the plan.
When he returned home, he sat down to write her a letter explaining his decision, claiming that he was doing it for her own good and, despite his ardent love for her, he spilled a drop of water on the paper so Emma would think he had cried when he had written it, and sent it to her. When Emma received the letter, she broke down. For the first time in her life, she considered suicide, and a long illness followed. Charles was worried sick about her. And for more than a month didn't leave her side. Laruo chose this time to deliver the cloak and travel case that Emma had bought in preparation for her journey with Rodolphe. Charles tried to refuse them. But Laro insisted that he couldn't send them back. Plus, it might have upset Emma. Faced with severe money troubles, Charles took out a loan with Laro with extortionate repayment conditions. Emma started to improve slowly and began to turn back to her religious upbringing. She found that the rituals and sacraments of the church offer her some consolation. And she threw herself into works of charity. When Emma was finally well enough, Homais suggested that Charles took her to Rouen for a day to visit the opera. And Charles agreed anything to cheer up Emma. They saw Lucy de Lammermoor Lagardy, and Emma got completely caught up in the music and the action. Charles, on the other hand, endured the performance. And couldn't wait to get back to Yonville Labbe. However, when Charles and Emma unexpectedly bumped into Léon during intermission, she instantly lost all interest in what was happening on stage. Feigning to struggle with the heat, she persuaded Charles to leave early, and they all went to a café to catch up. Léon had finished his studies in Paris and was now working for a big law firm in Rouen. Seeing Emma again brought back all the old feelings for Léon, and he desired nothing more than to seduce her. They began to talk about the opera. Charles wanted to give Emma the opportunity to see the last act and, naively, he suggested that she could stay another day, even though he would have to return to the village the next morning. Léon followed Emma and Charles to their hotel, planning to seek her out in the morning. He found her in the hotel and gathered the courage to confess his feelings for her. Emma pretended reluctance but eventually agreed to a meeting in the cathedral the next day. Léon got there early. When she finally arrived, he persuaded her to join him in a carriage, and they set off on a tour around the city. On her return to Yonville, Emma learned that Charles's father had died. Larouo, ever keen to draw her deeper into debt, congratulated her on the coming fortune of her and Charles's inheritance. He told her about Charles's money troubles and that he had delivered her cloak and travel case. Emma got worried that Larouo might have suspected something. When he suggested that she might have wanted to ask Charles for power of attorney so she can sort out her debts with Larouo directly, she saw it as a way to hide her deceit. She drafted a note and showed it to Charles but pretended that she wasn't happy with it and would like to consult Léon on the wording. Charles agreed, and Emma set off to Rouen to spend three days with Léon. Driven by her desire for him, she came up with a plan to see him regularly. She persuaded Charles that she needed piano lessons from a well-known piano teacher in Rouen. Desperate to see her happy, Charles agreed, and from then on, Emma traveled to Rouen every Thursday. Emma grew ever more brazen and entangled herself deeply in her own web of lies. Elarharuo started to hassle her to pay back the money she and Charles had borrowed, as well as to pay for all the items she had bought on credit. When she told him that she didn't have the money at the moment, he suggested that she sold a property that used to belong to Charles's father. He even came up with a buyer for her. With her power of attorney, she agreed to the sale. But instead of taking her money to pay off the bills, Laruo proposed that she might have wanted to keep hold of it and pay back the money in six months' time. Emma agreed and continued to live beyond her means, spending money and visiting Léon regularly. But their feelings for each other began to grow stale. Emma discovered that, after a while, the affair began to feel like her marriage. 
she became even more reckless and, after a night at a masked ball where she ended up in the company of rakes and, prostituted, Laruo appeared at her door, asking for his money back. The next day, the bailiff and two witnesses came to Emma and Charles's house to value their possessions. Charles wasn't at home and was still unaware of what was happening, and Emma started clutching at straws. First, she tried to convince Léon to get a loan of 3,000 francs for her. He was unsuccessful. Next on her list was the notary Monsieur Guillaumin, but when he fell to his knees, wrapped his arms around her waist and professed his love for her. She left embarrassed and humiliated. As a last resort, she took her old route to La Huchette to see Rodolphe, but he also refused to give her money. At the end of her tether, Emma went to the apothecary's house and claimed she required rat poison. She opened the cupboard, grabbed a bottle of arsenic and drank it. She returned home, wrote a letter to Charles, who by now knew that the house was up for auction. The poison worked slowly, and Emma was in agony for hours. All of Charles's attempts to rescue her failed, and after a grueling struggle, she died. To please her, as though she were still alive, he adopted her predilections, her ideas, he waxed his mustache, he signed bills just as she had done. She was corrupting him from beyond the grave. Charles was inconsolable. He stoked working and kept Emma's bedroom almost as a shrine. But his memory of his wife shattered when he found the crumpled up letter Rodolphe had written to Emma. On the day of their planned escape, the very same day, Bert found him sitting on the bench in the garden, dead. Please subscribe to my channel. We're gonna show you world masterpieces in about 15 minutes with manga. Manga is Japanese style comics that is easy for everyone to understand. We're sure that you can grasp the context shortly. See you next time.